Hi, I'm John Stevenson, and we're going to look at the story of the axe head. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, and sons of the prophets, uh, that's a, a designation, just doesn't mean, you know, uh, the, the children of the prophets and the prophets are doing their thing and, and the kids are doing their thing. Now the sons of the prophets is the, the, the collection of prophets, that's what they're called, they're called the sons of the prophets because they are prophets. Uh, and they come to Elisha, behold now the place before you where we are living is too limited for us. Apparently, there have been more sons of the prophets. This group of prophets have been growing. The ministry has been getting larger. The place where they're staying is too big. Verse 2, please let us go to the Jordan and each of us take from there a beam and let us make a place there for ourselves where we may live. And so he said, go. Verse 3, then one said, please be willing to go with your servants. And he said, I'll go too. You know, uh, so they're going to relocate to the area down by the Jordan River. Verse 4, so he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was falling, a, or one of them was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, alas, my master, for it was borrowed. Uh, apparently, the the level of the Jordan was such, or the depth of the Jordan, at, at least in that location, was such, where it could not easily be retrieved. And apparently, they didn't do much in the way of swimming. And so, he's just lost the axe hut. Verse 6, Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there. And made the iron float. Now, iron doesn't normally float, even if you throw sticks into the water. So, this sounds like it is something on the nature of a miracle. <laughs> it's not a, a great miracle where, where you've got, you know, fire coming down from heaven before all of Israel. It's not the parting of the Red Sea, not, not the parting of the Jordan, but a floating axe head. Can I call it this? A minor <laughs> miracle. Uh, and verse 7, he said, take it up for yourself. So he put out his hand and took it. Now, what will we make of this minor miracle and a floating accent? The story of the floating accent. Well, first of all, I want you to notice that it's connected by geography to the, ple- to the previous narrative. The previous story was Naaman, back in chapter 5, uh, who, comes to the, who comes to Elisha and is told, go dip yourself. Remember how we saw that the the Greek term there, the the Greek translation of the Septuagint renders it, go baptize yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Well, here, here again, we're by the Jordan River. So the two stories are geographically connected. Uh, the, it's taking place at the Jordan. And uh, whereas Naaman had, had baptized himself in the Jordan, now we see, and the Jordan had been involved in curing him of his leprosy, now we see the Jordan returning this lost accent. This lost, notice, there had been a lost Aramean, and now a lost accent. And I think you're supposed to see those two together. Both narratives tell us of the power of God, but also both narratives tell us of something that was lost and then was found. Something that was lost and then recovered. Notice the elements of the story. The prophets are going to relocate to a new place. And the axe hut is lost in the Jordan. And Elisha has a stick cut and thrown into the Jordan And as the stick lands in the Jordan, it sinks, and the axe head floats, and therefore it is recovered. Now that short little story about an axe head juxtaposed with a story about a lost captain, a lost Gentile, is also our story. You say, which one? Both. If you're not Jewish, then... There was a time, perhaps, when you were that lost Gentile, when you were like an axe head dropped into the water. And so we find out that the prophets 
they pointed us to a new covenant. The, the, that new covenant was actually promised in the Old Testament prophets. And as we come to the New Testament, we find that that new covenant has been embraced, has come into power, and the Messiah came for those who were lost, who like that axe head were lost and, and could not be found unless something were to take place. And the thing that took place in the same way that the, kit, the stick was cut and thrown into the Jordan, he died upon a stick. He died upon a cross. And he was buried. And as we trust in him, as we believe in him, we are restored. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 talks about how we were all dead in our trespasses and sins. But, you read a little bit further, but he made us alive together with him. And as we trust in him, can I say it this way? As, as we trust in him, we float. As we trust in him, we come alive and are spiritually resurrected. And there's coming a day. There's coming a day where if we die, that spiritual resurrection will be matched with a physical resurrection as well.